All right, how are you doing? How are you guys doing? Everybody doing all right? Are you in the holiday spirit here a little bit? Happy holidays to everybody. I'm so excited to be here in New York with you. And uh, I've been on the road all week. I was in Washington, D.C. for the last couple of days. Exciting times. And uh, I've never been more excited to be right here in New York. We have an incredible world tour put together for you. And we're also broadcasting this live around the world on Salesforce Live. So welcome to the thousands of people who are joining us online today as well. You know, I tell you, I love coming back to New York and I love being with all of you. There's a lot of different reasons why that is true. Not only because it's Salesforce's most exciting and largest market in the world, not only because there's more Salesforce MVPs here than any other city, but it always feels like a family reunion here. It always feels like when we get together, we're all coming back together as a family. And that when we wrote this slide to welcome you, our New York City Ohana, that's Ohana is the Hawaiian word for family. That's why I'm so excited to be here. And I'm here to inspire you, to educate you, to motivate you. But I'll tell you that before I do any of those things, I want to do something very important to me. I want to thank you. I want to thank each and every one of you for what you have done for us and what you do for others every single day. It's noticed. I appreciate it. All of our employees appreciate it. All of our customers appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you do for us every day. We don't say it enough at Salesforce. We're anchored in this value of gratitude. It's very important to us. And I especially want to thank all of our Salesforce MVPs who are here who have done such an amazing job in this city. So thank you to all of you. And welcome home. Welcome home to all of you, all of our customer trailblazers, the people who've done all this incredible work right here in New York. Welcome home to you, this family reunion, as I said. These incredible people, we know so many of these great people up on the screen that we're kind of profiling today, like Maria or Carlos or Marielle. Thank you to you and welcome home to you. MVPs in our success community, our user groups, our partner ecosystem, you have just done such an incredible job, so thank you. And now look at what's happening here, right here in New York City. This incredible new Salesforce Tower is emerging. Isn't that amazing? I think back to my first trip. Yeah, it's incredible, incredible. It's a testament to you and what, you, what you've done here. I think back to my first trip here in New York, our first seminar on Salesforce 17 years ago, we had three people in the room. And it's gotten a little bigger since then, a little more exciting. But we're building this path forward and we're building it together. And you can see, you know, not just innovator of the decade that Forbes has said, and one of the 100 best companies to work for, now a Fortune 500 company, but Salesforce will do over $8.3 billion this year in revenue, the fastest growing of the top 10 software companies, 24,000 employees, 50 billion customer interactions per month. And they say we're going to deliver almost $400 billion to the GDP by 2020 and create over 2 million jobs. People say, how does that happen every day? And I say, look around. It's all the people in this room who are making it happen. So thank you for creating this great company. And as you know, <laughs> and as you know already, when we created this company, of course, we had some ideas, some visions, some dreams, some thoughts about the future, cloud computing, and so forth and so on. But the first day, the first day of our company, we, we put 1% of our equity, our profit, our time into a foundation. It started to cement what is our core values. We started to think about what were we going to do with this company? We're we just going to build a company to build more products and sell them? Or can we do something else with business? Can business be a platform for change? Well, yes, it can, but you better be clear about what's important to you. What is really important to you? And with us at Salesforce, it starts with trust. There's nothing more important than the trust we have with each one of you, our customers, our partners. This is what matters to us, is the trust we have with you. Of course, we have to grow. That's a critical part of being successful in industry and in business. Growth is important. 
But growth is never more important than trust. You cannot trade away growth for trust. If all of a sudden growth becomes your highest value, then where does the trust go? So we commit ourselves to trust and to growth and of course to innovation. That's something that Salesforce lives and breathes every single day and equality. And there's never been a more important time in our world for equality. I just spent the last couple of days in Washington, D.C., and I was in our Capitol building, I was in our White House. And when I, when I got to our Capitol building, I, I had stopped and I had to read the Declaration of Independence again. And it talked about this incredible, incredible idea that we're all created equal and that we're all pursuing this incredible life and liberty and this pursuit of happiness, that this is the values of our country you walk into our Senate hall, you read about these incredible values of liberty, you read about the values of union, of tolerance, freedom. Our country is built on great values. That's what has made us a great country. That's why I've been so excited to fight around the country to preserve those values. Whether it's our fights in Indiana for our LGBTQ brothers and sisters, or whether it's our fight for women, for gender equality, and pay equity, or whether it's our fights for racial equality, the sales forces is committed to qu quality and equality at a greater level than ever before. I'm excited to have here with us today one of our board members, General Colin Powell, who has fought for equality for many years. <laughs> General, thank you. Good. General, would you, would you just stand up for just a moment and give us a, you know, this is a time, and certainly it's the season, holiday season, we want to be inspired. Can you give us some inspiring thoughts <laughs> about equality? As a New Yorker. As a New Yorker, I will do so. I was born in Harlem, about two or three miles from here, uh, 80 years ago or thereabouts. And I was born to immigrant parents who came here seeking a better life from the island of Jamaica. They both came here on banana boats. And they had two children, one a teacher and one became a soldier. And as I went through my public school education here in the city of New York, no West Point, no special schools, military schools anywhere else in the country, public school right here in New York, kindergarten through college. As I went through that, I realized that, uh, you know, I really like this military life and this is what I do well and this is my passion and so I'm going to concentrate on getting my commission as an officer and going to the United States Army. In those days when I graduated from college in 1958, the military was the most progressive social institution in America. We had integrated, we had eliminated all of our segregated units and we had focused on the issue of equality. And I'll never forget when I went to my first post was Fort Benning, Georgia, the infantry school, where I learned how to be an infantryman, a paratrooper, a ranger, and all the other things infantrymen should do. And I remember when I was finished as a young second lieutenant with my courses, yeah. this one sergeant said to me, let me tell you about equality now. We don't care that you were born in Harlem and you're black. We don't care that your parents were immigrants that came from another country. We don't care that you were poor. We don't care that you didn't go to West Point or anywhere else like that, but you got a public school education. We don't care. You are equal in the eyes of the Army. And the only thing we care now is performance and potential. If you perform well, if you demonstrate potential, you'll get ahead. Do you understand that, Lieutenant Powell? Yes, sir, that seems pretty clear to me, you know? And here I am. I became chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And I have people ask me, hey, when you were a kid growing up in the South Bronx section of New York, did you dream you were going to be chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff or Secretary of State? And I just smiled and said, yeah, there I was. <laughs> I was standing on the corner of 163rd and Kelly Street in the South Bronx, Fort Apache section of the South Bronx. I was about 10 years old, I believe. And I said to myself, self, you're going to grow up and become chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for the Armed Forces of the United States. It was unthinkable, it was unachievable, it was beyond any level of aspiration that I could have had at that time, but it happened. 
It happened because not only was the Army changing our social mores, but the nation was changing. And the issue of equality became more and more important. And I have watched through my almost 60 years of public service how that has affected us in so many ways. How we have become a more open country, how we understand that every person in every organization has value. And the role of a leader is to bring forth those values and to make sure those values contribute to the success of the organization, whatever organization that might be. And I have learned over the years through experience in the White House, through experience at the State Department, and through 35 years of military experience where we took in a lot of youngsters of all kinds, shapes, and forms, that the only thing that counts is the content of your heart. The only thing that counts is your value system. The only thing that counts is your integrity. The only thing that counts is the character that you bring to your organization, to the effort. And as I often tell many of my young audiences, you know, it isn't where you start in life, it's what you do with life that will determine where you end up with life. And you have to remember that every single person in your organization is a person of value. No matter what their color, no matter what their gender, no matter what other distinction that make them different from somebody else, they're not really different. In the eyes of God, they're all the same. They all start out together. I benefited from a public school education where the city of New York paid for my entire education, kindergarten through college, cost my parents nothing. Why? Because the citizens of the city of New York, the state of New York, realized that we as a government have no more important responsibility than to educate every single kid, no matter race, color, skin, or anything else, and we will tax ourselves to pay for it. And that's what equality was all about. And then that same kind of equality followed me in the Army. I realized that even though I didn't go to West Point or the Citadel or other places, which at that time would not have allowed a black kid to go to their military schools, that I got a pretty good public school education right here in New York City. And it allowed me to compete with all of them because I believed and because the Army believed in me. So equality is making sure that you see every single person in your organization is equal to any other person. The question is character, integrity, content of their heart, content of their mind. Are they willing to work hard? All other issues are secondary to your seeing everybody as equal. And that is what makes a high-performing organization. That is what makes an organization come together. As I say to people all the time, you build that element of trust by demonstrating your commitment to equality, by demonstrating your commitment to integrity and character, you build that trust and respect for each other. And it is that trust and respect that is the glue that holds an organization together, and it is also the lubricant that keeps it moving forward. I can tell you that Salesforce.com and my good friend Mark Benioff, who I've known for 20 odd years since he was a little boy, um, are committed to this, not only as a personal commitment to his part, but a cultural commitment to the organization and the entire board supports him in that effort. So, Mark, thank you for giving me these few minutes. <laughs> thank you very much, General. Well done, thank you. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, General. And also, uh, the General's also sitting next to our new Chief Equality Officer, Tony Prophet. So, Tony, please stand up. and. Thank you very much. And Thank you, Mark. Thank you. We're, we're excited to have you on board to help us continue this legacy and uh, thrilled that you could be here today. And you have an exciting program later uh, this afternoon. We want inviting everybody to attend. Isn't that right? A absolutely. We've got a great program at lunch, uh, the executive session. We've got Billie Jean King and uh, Janet Foudy. They're going to come and we're going to have a conversation and learn from their great leadership role models and their life experiences and really looking forward to it. So really welcome everyone to join us. Very excited. Thank you so much, Tony. All right. Well, it was about 20 years ago, in fact, that I met General Powell. And General Powell said to me, you know, Mark, you have to decide what you're going to do with your business and what business is all about. And I invited me to a program in 1997 in Philadelphia called the President Summit for America's Future. Um, and he introduced the concept of America's Promise. And we took from that this idea that you could have integrated philanthropy into your company. We put 1% of our equity, 1% of our profit, and 1% of all of our employees' time into a 501c3 public charity. It was easy to do because we had no equity, we had no profit, <laughs> we had no employees. 
But today we do, and so look at this. We have uh, done 1.8 million hours of community service so far. We've given away $137 million in grants. And there's over 30,000 nonprofits and NGOs who run their service on Salesforce for free. And we have over 1,300 companies now who have taken that same 111 pledge. So we are really excited about that. And this is my favorite time. If you're with a nonprofit or NGO here in New York City, don't be ashamed or shy. Please stand up and be recognized for your outstanding service to the world. If you're with a nonprofit or NGO, look at that. Stand up, nonprofits and NGOs, and be recognized for doing God's work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you very much to all of you. And we ask our commercial customers to help out our nonprofits and NGO customers. They don't have as many resources as you do, and they need you to get their jobs done. So they're here. Please introduce yourself to them, and please welcome them to be part of the Salesforce family, which they certainly are a critical part of. Well, I'll tell you, it's this 111 model, the pursuit of equality. All of these things, this is the value of Salesforce. This is, these are, this is our core, this is who we are. But it's in this frame of the technology industry is why we are all here today. We see this constant march of technology. It goes on and on. It's amazing what we've talked about here in New York City. You know, the, the path from mainframes to mini computers to personal computers and now to where there's, you know, no computers on the desktops at all. And the path of cloud and computing and social computing and mobile computing and IAT, IoT, and we're moving into artificial intelligence. We're going to talk about that today. We see not just the Internet of smart things. We see this Internet of incredible, interconnected, intelligent network of things in a world that we could have never imagined. And it's happening right before our eyes. That's what's so amazing, these 75 billion smart things. You know, I look up on this slide, and it reminds me of my travels all around the world. And when I see one of these things, it gets added to the slide. Of course, I have my Fitbit that I wear that's connected to my phone and connected to all my friends and all my community. It's one of my smart things. The car that I drove here today, this new BMW, and this incredible new uh, Chevy Volt as well. Unbelievable how it's connected. I was just in Switzerland with this incredible robot manufacturer, ABB. The robot is not just connected, it's a smart robot. It's connected to the other robots. It's connected to the factory where it was made. It's connected to the factory where it works. Or you look at incredible technology from our partner, Amazon, with Alexa, where all I do is can talk to the device, and it brings me all my information. In the world of computing, I love it. It's why I get up every day. The constant and never-ending change, it's amazing. But the reason why we're here today, the reason why we come here at these conferences and why we have been coming to these conferences for 17 years, is as this technology evolves and all these changes are happening and things get more connected and smarter and changing our businesses and changing our industries and changing our lives, for the people in this room know that behind all of these things, behind my Philips toothbrush and my Fitbit and my Samsung phone and my Chevy Volt and my ABB robot and my Amazon Alexa, behind all of that is a customer. And that's why we're here, to talk about that. Because we're here in business to serve our customers. And companies who focus on serving their customers are the most successful companies in the world. And that's why we're not just moving into the age of equality, we're moving into this age of the customer. And you just look at how all of these technologies that are emerging are helping to create this incredible single view of the customer. It could be, I was just in Los Angeles with Farmers Insurance, and you can see right here, Farmers Insurance has built all these amazing new apps. They even have an incredible new insurance product uh, that we actually were very fortunate to be able to work with them and create with them using our Ignite team, that not only do they offer you insurance for your family, but if you have a teenage driver, you can buy insurance by the hour. <laughs> I like that. Pretty cool, right here, and here's the app. Now, another one of our awesome customers, Intuit, a lot of us have done TurboTax and 
A lot of us pay our taxes here in New York. I know there's one person who doesn't pay their tax in New York, but we're not going to go into that. <laughs> when you take out this application, take out this TurboTax app, you don't know how to pay your tax returns, you have a question about taxes, live video right in the app from the call center connecting you. So not only is Intuit using our service cloud, but they're using our SOS technology to give you that video connectivity. Pretty cool. Or you can just go right up to Detroit, General Motors, and see the all new uh, Chevy cars and the incredible new OnStar system, delivering one-to-one -one customer experiences through our marketing cloud. This idea that they're able, they know where you are, they know where you're going, you've opted into their network, and they're able to say to you, hey, would you like this idea? Would you like that idea? What about this? Very cool. And I was just two weeks ago with our awesome customer, Home Depot in Atlanta, great city here in the United States. I've been traveling nonstop for the last three, four months. Atlanta, amazing city, by the way, amazing. And in Home Depot, you know, the way that they've increased their same store sales and found a whole new level of customer connectivity is they realize not only do they have all their consumers in their stores, but of course they have their contractors, those are also their customers, and their employees, those are their customers too. But the leverage they found in their business is when they hooked all three of them together, and then all of a sudden creating this incredible customer community that fed off each other, where the employees were helping the contractors, the contractors were helping the consumers, the consumers are being supported by the employees, and it's not, not not so unusual to all of a sudden be, in a, be online with Home Depot now in their customer community, and the employee says, hey, come into the store, I'm gonna help you on that aisle, this is where I work, aisle three, come by here, I'm gonna help you with that paint, or whatever you need. Really cool, I actually really love Home Depot. And here's Adidas, and Adidas is awesome. How many of you have any of the new Adidas Yeezy shoes? Anybody here, Kanye West fan? I know there is one Kanye West fan in New York also, actually. <laughs> anyway. I got them. I got a whole bunch of these. <laughs> I, <laughs> Kanye West has an amazing shoe on Adidas called the Yeezy 350. And Salesforce runs Adidas, and he introduced the new shoe a couple weeks ago. In one hour, he sold 10,000 shoes. Pretty awesome. In one minute, he sold 540 shoes. So we had to deliver that level of peak load and that ability to scale Adidas rapidly to support his huge success with these amazing new shoes. Congratulations to Kanye. And here's a, a look at this incredible Salesforce Commerce Cloud that's running for Adidas and so many amazing uh, customers all over the world. Pretty cool. And it's not just commerce. You can also see, um, well, how many of you took Uber to get here today? Raise your hands. Yeah, wow, isn't that a cool? And Uber uses Salesforce to talk to their customers. Well not just their consumers, but their drivers. Their drivers are their customers. So they're onboarding drivers and training drivers and trying to get drivers to change their behaviors or be more customer-centered. That's all done on Salesforce. It's, that is the age of the customer. Or Schneider Electric. How many of you know about 50% of the world's office buildings are run by Schneider Electric? And everything in an office building day is getting hooked up all the control systems and the lighting systems. It's amazing what's going on. We're gonna show you that a little bit later. And the power of all of these integrated controls and connected controls means that Schneider has to be connected with their customer in an incredible new way. So you look at that in sales and service, in marketing and communities and commerce, whether it's in the internet of things, whether it's in the very fabric of the customer network. We are in the age of the customer. We have a single view of our customer day. And that's what Salesforce is all about. And that's why we're here. We're rededicated on ourselves to our commitment to support our customers, be successful with their customers, to help our customers connect with their customers in a whole new way. And the thing that's amazing about that is that that's something we've been doing for 17 years, and we still feel like we're just getting going now. You look at all the technologies that we've talked about here in Javits Center, 
over 17 years of the cloud. That was where we started. Then we moved into social networks, mobility, IoT. I mean, these technologies are incredible. What they've done for customer connectivity has been game changing. We all know that. We've lived through that. We've lived through that together as a family. We have learned about that. We've executed that. But something incredible is happening in our industry right now. A lot of you know about it. We're going to learn a lot about it today. It's extremely important that we are all together on what is happening right now. And that is the march towards a whole new world of artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence are things that we all you know, have seen in movies. And I mean, we all saw the Terminator movie. We all saw Minority Report. We, we get it, where we could potentially go. There's a lot of different layers of artificial intelligence. Some of it's scary, some of it's exciting, some of it's empowering, some of it's enabling. But ultimately, for us in the room, it's about smarter customer relationships. And Salesforce now, for more than a year, has invested about a billion dollars in acquiring a number of AI companies and putting together probably one of the world's best AI teams. Incredible breakthroughs in AI, specifically about customer relationships. Oh, everyone's kind of choosing, you know, where they're going to work on AI. It's kind of like cloud, same thing happened, or social or mobile. Well, AI is the same thing. We're kind of choosing where do you want to focus. We want to focus our AI in customer relationships. But for those of you that are committed, deeply committed to our platform, to the Salesforce platform, we want that Salesforce platform to deliver to you exactly how we delivered mobility, exactly how we delivered the cloud, exactly how we delivered social networks, we want to be able to deliver to you AI right through the Salesforce platform to make it the easiest AI, to make it something that you can bring right into your companies. And that's why we're introducing you today to Salesforce Einstein. And Salesforce Einstein is the world's easiest AI. It's available declaratively, without programming, right inside of our platform. It's like magic. And as I've toured it all over the country, and as I've shown it to our customers, they say that. It's like magic. It's getting rolled out into our applications, and they can access it programmatically with programmers. But I think we all know there's only 15 million programmers in the world, and a lot of our customers don't have that data science or programmatic or AI programming capabilities. So they need to be able to get that technology declaratively without programming or through a low-code environment or a no-code environment. That's why it has to be the world's easiest AI, to make everything smarter, to make the world's smartest CRM, to get closer to your customers. And then Einstein becomes everybody's data scientist. I love this quote from Albert Einstein. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited, but imagination circles the world. So AI is a critical part of all of our future. We all get that. We're all now starting to use that right in Salesforce. We've started to roll that out to thousands of customers. And over the next couple of months, as we roll out even our next release in February, almost all of our customers will have access to the very top AI technology in the world to be able to roll that into their companies. And that magic will just change our customers' lives and it will help them to connect with their customers in incredible new ways. But intelligence is only one of the critical transformations that I see going on right now in our industry. And we're also going to talk about four other critical things that are going on that all of our customers are stepping into. It's not just AI. It's also about a whole other level of speed. And these concepts of declarative platforms deeply integrated into the applications means that you can just go faster than ever before. And it's not just going faster than ever before, but you have to have the productivity the productivity to get there. I'm going to talk about that in a second and why we bought an amazing company called Quip and why productivity is so important. And mobility. You all know, I, for years and years, I haven't traveled with a computer at all. I just travel with this smartphone. I run Salesforce only on my phone. I don't need anything else. And I know for so many of our customers, that's true as well. And today, we're going to talk about how to build and deploy mobility applications and connectivity. More and more of our customers are building these incredible products that are connected through Internet of Things, and how do we connect all of these things together? And these five transformations, intelligence and speed and productivity and mobility, connectivity, that's where we're organizing Salesforce. 
So that's why you see this huge focus on Salesforce Lightning and why Salesforce Lightning is doing so well with our customers and why so many customers are getting ready for Lightning and deploying Lightning in their organizations. Whether it's the core Lightning experience, whether it's Lightning Bolt, our incredible new uh, community uh, development environment, whether it's our Lightning App Exchange where you can find all kinds of la Lightning components and capabilities, whether it's our Lightning App Builder itself for building these incredible apps, it's amazing what is going on inside Lightning. And we're going to talk about that today. We're going to go deep into Lightning with all of our breakouts. And it's not just about Lightning. As I talked about with Adidas, we have this incredible new commerce capability. And the last time I was here in New York with a major program, we didn't have that. And now here we do. We have all these amazing organizations running on Salesforce Commerce. Not just Adidas. You're getting ready for holidays and you want to go buy a box of candy for any of your friends. We can do it right now from the, your seats. You just go to seizecandies.com uh, and you'll see our commerce experience running there. It's amazing. And commerce is then coupled with this ability to have productivity. If you haven't gone to the App Store yet, go to the App Store today, go to the App Store now, and download Quip, Q-U-I-P. We all grew up on spreadsheets and word processors. We've seen WordPerfect, and we saw Lotus123. We've seen Excel. We've seen Word. We've had all these incredible experiences with productivity apps. There's nothing like this product. This is the fastest growing, most exciting productivity app in the world. It lets you have live conversations with all of your, with all of your employees and all of your customers. And it's deeply integrated into Salesforce's ecosystem. And it's free for our customers to download today and start using and inviting your employees onto this incredible application. It was built on the phone first by an executive who, first of all, was at Google and built Google Maps and then left Google to build a social network that was acquired by Facebook. And then he became the CTO of Facebook and built Facebook. And after he built Facebook, he quit his job a few years ago because he had a vision for the next level of productivity. And he built this amazing company called Quip. And now he's part of Salesforce. And his whole team is part of Salesforce. And we're building Quip deeply into Salesforce to give our customers this amazing next generation productivity experience. And if you need spreadsheets and word processing capability and collaboration capability in your company, this is the most incredible technology I've ever seen. It's all I use. Salesforce has 20,000 employees on it today. Facebook has 14,000 employees on it today. Electronic Arts has 3,000 employees on it today. And thousands and thousands of other companies are growing and expanding with this product all over the world. It's really cool. And I want to encourage everybody to download Quip today and start working on it. But it's not just about productivity. It's not just about, not just about commerce. It's not just about speed. It's also about new ways to engage the network, conversational user interfaces, the ability to communicate with our customers through text or through social media as well. And Salesforce is there, expanding our capabilities for our customers with this incredible new live message technology and for our customers who are taking all of these technologies and deploying them mobily. We have Salesforce One, which has been deployed to millions of our customers. And now you can take Salesforce One, brand it with your user interface, with your identity, with your logo of your company, your color scheme, put it into the App Store as your app, name it however you want to name it, and it will be all about you. And so companies like Schneider and Coke and Unilever and hundreds of thousands of others are able to now use this incredible mobile capability and put it right inside the App Store as well with their own branding with My Salesforce One. Well, everything is getting connected. We know that. And that's why we're so excited about our IoT cloud. And we're going to be showing that to you today as well in the demonstrations this morning where all of these incredible next generation control systems get connected to this customer data. This is what the Salesforce customer success platform is all about. Salesforce customer success platform is giving you this incredible declarative capability. Whether you're connecting IoT, whether you need AI, whether you need to go fast in declarative platforms, 
whether it's sales or service or marketing or community or analytics or apps or commerce or IoT or Quip or App Exchange, we're giving you a complete solution to deliver customer success. Well, I'm really excited about that. But as you know, what I'm most excited about is not the technology, it's all of you, our family. Because it's an ecosystem of customer success. And to watch what you have done, especially here in New York, with your local user group and online success communities, the empowerment vehicles that you've created for women and others, with tra and trailhead for training and one-on-one -on -one training capability and badging to be able to see so many people from New York come to Dreamforce, the local events that have taken place here, our customer success managers. That's what to us is customer success. It's that individual, one-on-one, -on -one human interaction. It's the family that has made the difference. So thank you for all of that. You made Salesforce what it is. And now to help you see the next generation of the technology, I'm thrilled to introduce you to our EVP of product marketing, Stephanie Buscemi, who's here today to show us Salesforce Einstein. Stephanie. Thank you, Mark. Welcome. All right, thank you. I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to talk to you all first and foremost about Einstein. And you know, when Mark and the founders started Salesforce 17 years ago, they took their inspiration from the consumer web. They looked at the consumer web and said, we want to make Salesforce automation as easy as purchasing a book on Amazon. And they did it. And that's what we're doing again here today with Einstein. But we're doing it for AI. Think about it. AI is already in our lives every single day. We may not realize it, but in our consumer life, it's with us. I wanted to give you a few examples in my personal life, how I see AI every day. First, we got my Halloween costumes and my Christmas costumes with my kids. I know all of you do. I live on Amazon making purchases. And it's not just what I'm looking for, the search. Amazon's giving me predictive recommendations. It's looking at related products based on my interests and needs and giving me those recommendations. That's AI. And if I'm ordering an Uber via Siri with natural language processing on my phone, that's AI again. And remember the days when you had to tag your photos on Facebook? You don't have to do that anymore because we now have facial recognition and that's machine learning in there. And it's not just for people. I thought you should all know that my dog, Milo Buscemi, also has his own Facebook page and is recognized as well. And if it doesn't stop there, we have it now with deep learning, with self-driving cars for Google. Now, shouldn't we all have that in the business world? We should. And that's what we've been thinking about here with Einstein. We looked and we said, we want to make this as easy for everyone in the business world. Now, lots of companies have been thinking about that. A lot of people have been working on that and have found out it's pretty hard. It's complex. It's not easy. There's a lot to it. First, it starts with the vast amount of data that all of you have to deal with. We've talked about this before. There's a data explosion. We have volumes of data. How do you wrangle all that data together easily to get new insights? Then once you get that data together, you've got to have all the modeling, all the algorithms to be able to apply on top of that to get that intelligence. And that typically means data scientists. Challenge number two there. There's a war on talent right now for data scientists. Hard to get them. So companies are putting lots of money into this, and not everyone is seeing the return yet. And we've thought about this a lot and worked very hard because we want to make this simple for you. That's in the DNA of Salesforce, taking the complex and making it easy. And we got our inspiration from no one other else than yours truly, Einstein. Einstein took and put a formula to create simplicity out of complexity. And that's exactly what we're doing here with it. We all started with the data, all of your customer data. So think about it, 17 years of working with you on your accounts, your leads, your contacts, your custom objects, taking all that data and marrying it with your external data, your unstructured data, 
bringing all that together for you in an automated way and then overlaying AI on that. So all those things I talked to you about in my consumer life of natural language processing, facial recognition, machine learning, applying all of that on your data, and last but not least, doing that all in the context of the Salesforce platform. The benefit to you is that we're building it right where you work. You don't have to go somewhere else for it. You don't have to rely on an analyst. It's right in your core workflow. Now, Mark said it before, it might sound like magic. That might sound too easy. And so I want to unpack that for you. I want to talk a little bit about how we did that. So first, it starts with our ability to capture all of that data. So all of the Salesforce data, marrying that up with things that keep you productive in your life, your email, your calendar, and that internet of things those devices that now are throwing off meaningful data that could help you better service to, market, and care for your customers. Bringing all of that together and then applying those algorithms and that data modeling onto it for you so you can get new kinds of insights. Let's think about that. What does this mean for a salesperson? It means they're smarter than ever because they're getting predictive lead scoring. No more going through rafts of leads and wondering which one is the good one. You're going to get that handed right to you. It's going to give you a new level of insight about all of your opportunities. If you're in service, it means the ability to now intelligently route cases to the right person in the call center. Who is skilled on which types of cases? And when they are dealing with those cases, Einstein's per providing recommendations on resolution. How do we do that? Bringing all of that together, Einstein's doing that and doing it right within the power of the platform. Now, right here is the customer success platform. All your data there on the bottom layer that we talked about, your IoT data, your social, your CRM, all with the power of the lightning experience and Einstein going through all of your applications. Now, something's not right here because Einstein's over on the side, and we all just told you, Einstein's in the platform. Hey, Einstein, do you think you can uh, get hop back in and get back in that platform for me? A little bit hokey, but it never gets old. <laughs> That's Einstein now in the platform. And, you know, little rumor, truth be told, Einstein loves New York City as well. And he's here to say hello and make a little cameo. So let's all give a shout out and a clap for Einstein. <laughs> he's cute. It's very cute. Okay, so. Einstein is now in the platform, as you saw. He's making every salesperson, every marketer, every service person, you name it, smarter than their organization. And it works with AppCloud as well, because you can build Einstein into any of the applications you build on your own. Could be for HR, it could be for finance. You can build that intelligence right into any application that you build. Now, enough of me talking about it. I want to show it to you. So let's see Einstein in action. What you're looking at right here is the winter 16 release. And this is the lightning homepage right here. And what you'll right away notice is in that right hand corner, guess who's with us now? Einstein. It is that easy. It's about getting started. Let's click the button and see what we do here. So what Einstein's doing right now is going across all of your data sources and reading the signals across those data sources. And you have the ability to add different data sources or remove data sources. So you'll see here, we've got all the CRM data, the accounts, the contacts, the leads, the opportunities, and your custom objects to be able to personalize that business for you. We also have the calendaring. We also have the email. Now, you'll see right here, the calendar isn't on. I want my calendar data in here because it wants to give me insights about what I'm doing in my work. So let's go ahead and switch on and see what happens here. That's great. We get a lot more events data in here, which probably means a richer set of insights. Let's see what Einstein has for us based on those data sources. So again, right in that right corner, Einstein's pushing to me insights immediately. 
right there at the top, you'll notice that Einstein's talking about one of my opportunities and saying a competitor was mentioned. Now, I never told Einstein who my competitors are. Einstein's smart. Einstein's going across all of my data, all of those opportunities, my email, everything, and Einstein has figured out who is my competition by looking at all of my past deals. So Einstein's alerting me here that there has been this tweet about the competitor or related to one of my opportunities. Now, he's not just making me smarter, he's making me more productive because right here, he's built in the ability to take action. I can call, I can email, or I can direct message right to that contact about that competitive quote. Now, it goes beyond the opportunities, though. Remember, I talked to you about those leads. Leads, leads, leads. We all need them as salespeople. There's never enough, but sometimes it feels like there's too many to go through. Right here, you'll see Einstein has pushed me a lead with a 96 lead score, Mary Beckham. Now, what's this lead score and who defined it? This is the beauty. You get to define the lead score. You have the power to do that. Right here, Einstein has gone through a whole set of predictive factors, looking at all my past deals closed and knows I typically close deals with a VP of sales. I sell into the electronics industry. And most importantly, this individual was just on our website and looked at a product demo. He's compiled all of this information for me and again, giving me the option to take action. I can send an email. I don't know about you, I write one too many emails in my day, I don't really like it. And that's why I really like Einstein because he's making it easier for me. He's recommending an email. He looked across my calendar to determine what is the right time or place? What's my availability? What's the topic for this person? And what could be the conversation? So with a simple click, I can go ahead and send that off. Now that's one opportunity. We talked about the fact that you're typically not working with one opportunity or one lead. You typically have a volume as a salesperson. So let's see what that looks like. Here, you're looking at my leads. This is a whole list of leads. We've all gotten these lists before. And in the past, we haven't had a whole heck of a lot of intelligence to apply and how we follow up on them. We look at them and say, well, there's, I could sort by company name, I could sort by industry, I could just pick off a few and leave the rest. But now with the lead score in place, it can help me be more productive and prioritize my business. You'll see here with the simple sort, I can see from 94 all the way down to 52, I have those lead scores. Now again, we said, how did you come up with that lead score? You decide. So right here, we're gonna go and look at how you configure Einstein. Let's look under the hood of the car here. So your admin could go right in here into this uh, configuration page and click on configuring and all the settings are right there. All of the information across multiple workflows. So number one, you have salespeople. What is the different workflow for a salesperson? How do you route them opportunities? How do you route them leads? For service, for marketing, and roll your own. You can create any workflow that you want and build Einstein into that. So for this case, we're talking about lead routing. So let's look at the lead routing right here. What you'll see on the right-hand side is that Einstein is a new feature in the platform. Right there. So here we're going to build how we use that lead score in this workflow. But imagine you can put that anywhere. You can put that in any workflow in any of your applications to push that intelligence. So when we talk about lead routing over here, I don't, I'm busy. I don't want to look at leads with a score less than 50. And I don't have to anymore. I now can say under 50, I want those to go on a marketing nurture journey with Pardot send those away. And by the way, anything between 50 and 90, what I wanna do, I wanna get those to my inside sales guys. I want my inside sales guys to work those leads. Now, they push those over. And by the way, if it is 95 or higher, that is a hot lead and I wanna see that now. Let me show you what that looks like. When the admin sets that up, now let's go and see what it looks like for the salesperson. For the salesperson, right here on their phone, they get that hot lead pushed to them. So everything that you see on the desktop is also in Salesforce One. 
These salespeople can truly run their business from their phone with Einstein. Right there, you see this 97 lead has been passed and all that relevant information, defining why it's a 97, giving a recommendation on a next best action and the ability to take action. So I'm gonna call that lead and I'm gonna close it for the quarter. That is the power of Einstein. Einstein is making every one of us smarter. He's making it easy, easier to get that insight. He's everywhere in the platform. You can build Einstein into any of the workflows and it's there for you as your own personal data scientist. That is an amazing innovation that we're thrilled to bring to all of you. Now, it does, it's not just about Einstein here in this customer success platform. At our core, we're true to the core. We are continuously innovating on the platform. Einstein is our latest innovation, but we are listening to you every step of the way. You tell us through the ideas exchange what you want in the platform, and we listen every single day. This is what drives our product, our product leaders and our engineers in the company. Over 750,000 ideas have been submitted by all of you, and those have all been built in the product. And we continuously look at that list. Now, Mark started to talk to you about Lightning. Lightning is ready, my friends. And we have now put over 500 new Lightning features since the launch in Dreamforce 15, and you'll have a Lightning Lookout to go check it out here today, so go do that. And with that, thank you very much, Mark. Great job, Stephanie. Please give her a hand. Very exciting. Great job, Stephanie. And um, I'm super excited about uh, Lightning, about Einstein. I'm really excited about Einstein because not only rolled it out in the last release for the Dreamforce release, but I know coming up in the February release, which is, I think, 206, is it? In the 206 release, we're going to see another several dozen new Lightning features and Einstein features that go out to all of our customers. So it's really cool. So they will, great job. Well done. All right. Well, Janet and Nadal, welcome. Please give them a great hand. Thank you for being here. These are our good friends from Deloitte Digital are here today. And Janet, you're the CEO of Deloitte Digital. You work with customers all over the world. You work with all technology. Give us some perspective. What does all this mean? So I've had the great privilege to lead Deloitte Consulting for the last year after leading our federal business and prior to that, our technology business. And what sits at the heart of what our clients want to spend time talking about, because we, like you, are all about the customer and client, it's really two things that I know are near and dear to yours and all of our colleagues here's heart. Um, the first is digital transformation and how our clients can make sure that they're the disruptor, not the disrupted, and how they can think about their front office and their back office and how they can be out in front of those conversations. So that's the first thing that is front and center. And just even listening to the conversation today um, gives me all sorts of new ideas and new conversations to push forward with our clients. Um, second, and also probably even of more importance, which I know personally to you is incredibly important, is our clients want to talk to us about talent. And the talent agenda has really evolved as front and center, and that's everything from inclusion to culture to multi-generational workforce to well-being, and how you wrap that into the conversation around an organization's ethos while you're living in this age of incredible disruption. That's really what it's all about, and frankly, is what sits at the core of our partnership together. Well, th those are the things that are really on my mind today. I mean, I've met with hundreds and hundreds of customers just in the last four months, and in each and every customer conversation I've had, this has been top of mind. It's, there's nothing more important than the personal interactions that we're having with each other. And I think that the reason why that is, is there's this natural motion of the technology to separate us from each other. And instead, we have to redefine what that technology to do to try to bring us closer together. You, you see that in global events where, you know, all of a sudden, what's going on in another country or what's going on in another region seems like a long way away. We're watching it on our phone. We're watching it on our TV. The technology has separated us. We have to regain our compassion uh, for each other to see that we're all one, uh, one person connected together. It's really important. So thank you for saying that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and then all, can you give us your view? You know, you've been implementing this technology. It's very exciting. Can you show, wh where do you see this going? 
Well, Mark, what I'll tell you is about some of the things we've done recently. Obviously, we're a Salesforce partner, and we do a lot with you guys. And so what we've done recently, we've implemented a couple of things. One is a product we call Mercury. It's our internal sales platform built on the Salesforce One platform with Lightning. And it's what it's done, it's given our partners a view of their business that they've never had before on their phone, in their hand, on the go. They spend a lot of time in the airports, as you might imagine. It's a great way of making them a lot more productive, but it gives them a lot of insight into their business that they had to wait to get back to the office to get to before. And we have uh, assembled a great team of folks that really put it together in about 90 days. We went from zero to 500 users, uh, literally in a very, very quick Not amount of time. Not fast enough. <laughs> As my <laughs> boss would tell you. true CEO, <laughs> faster. It's always faster, it's yeah. always more. Um, but but it's, it's, been, it's been a great way for us to actually lead for our entire workforce. We have 85,000 people within Deloitte Consulting in the US. And this is a great way for us to show that leadership by starting with the partners. Usually when you start implementation, you start from the bottom and go up. We've actually doing it backwards from the top and actually leading by example. And to that, to that matter, we actually also produced a, or developed a product on the Salesforce app platform, which is called Connect Me. And what Connect Me is, it's a way of reimagining the entire HR uh, talent platform. It starts from the recruiting, onboarding, the hiring process, um, and that, you don't get 85,000 people by just sort of standing still. And, uh, but we also have 100,000 alumni that we connect with, and we're using the ConnectMe platform as a way of actually really coming together. And um, we've actually, we're now OEMing that as a product on the Salesforce platform. So if anybody's interested. <laughs> well, that's very exciting, and I'll tell you that uh, I think, well, I don't think there's probably a customer here who isn't interested in that. But I think what they really like to know is if they could come and talk to you after, after the show and get some of your high quality advice. I'm sure we'd be happy to. And we have a whole team right behind us that will help us, so. Very good. Um, appreciate the time. Well, thank you very much for being here today. We're thrilled to have you as part of our Ohana, part of our family. Thank you for everything you're doing. You're a great partner for Salesforce, and now to see you using it so successfully inside Deloitte, that's been a dream come true for us. So thank you for all your hard work and dedication to our thank platform. You. It's been, a, been, been one of our proudest, proudest moments, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.